We need Hector. Hector, sir? You sure? I have a list of demands, of course. Get the Clapper's Rig Town Clock working again. Something about this place rings a bell. I can think of only one man trying to do good for this community. Find out what he needs. 25,000. Where the bleeding hell am I supposed to pull that kind of cash? I want the hub of the Clapper's Rig porn industry shut down. All right, Crossstate. I've done everything on your list. Oh. You think that's all? You do a little spring cleaning and we all just go home. Oh, here we go. Did you place the puck in the pizza? What in the only living toss? Looks like this pizza party's over for you. Ball bags. So, Hector, no hostages, no terrorist, just an abandoned laptop in an abandoned building. Why, one could almost say there haven't been any crimes committed at all. Except for the 37 cops who'll be spending tonight in a heap. Ah, a trifle. Merely a speck in the eye of a grand plan. Look, I'm sure it's a great story and all, but can we get on with this? I feel like I've been staring at this rifle for over a year. Ah, uh, Hector, always the here and now and never the wider scope. Fine. Have it your way. Hope you don't mind if I don't stick around for what I'm sure will be profound parting words. The rifle you see before you is powered by a laptop containing highly sensitive face recognition software. Take one step closer and you'll be eating that pizza with a side order of garlic bread. <laughs> Shove it, you bellend. Laser guided lobotomy is but a sneeze away. He said not one step closer, but he never mentioned anything about one step sideways. And apparently one step is all I'm gonna get. Just my luck. Why couldn't this have been sweet chili? What are you, an idiot? Down to me last slice. No, don't do it. I can't believe I just ruined a perfectly last slice of pizza. Oh, well, I'll still find a way to force it down, I'm sure. Oh, come on. What a waste. Look, you've ruined me last slice. Me life's hanging by a thread here. Can we stop with a bloody tutorial? Piss off! I can't get any nearer till I shut it down, or at least put it to sleep permanently. Mm, nice finish. Is that mahogany? I wonder how much compensation I'd get if that thing shot me through the head. It's mounted to the floor. <laughs> the result of that warning shot didn't even give me time to finish me slice. It's a loose panel over some electrical stuff. Screwed on tight. Maybe I could loosen it with something. Okay, nice and slow. Hmm, nothing back there but a jumble of old wire. Still, you never know. What is a jumble of old wire? Wiry. That floor plank looks a little loose. If this had been a slapstick comedy instead of an action drama, that plank probably would have smacked me in the face. Looks like that rifle had it in for poor old Mr. Romero. Well, better him than me. 
It's like a fishing rod a child would make, the kind that usually catches sweet bugger all. I can't combine those things. This ought to mess with that facial recognition bollocks. Here goes. It's a shame there's no one round to see this. <laughs> that even challenged my suspension of disbelief. That's the closest thing to a weapon committing suicide I've ever seen. I wonder if this is one of those check and see if it's dead moments, like in horror films. Those never turn out so well. Whew. Rule number one. When you're inside a building surrounded by Clappers Rig police snipers, never, ever go to the window. The number of times I've wanted to do that in my office. Escape! Yeah, worth a try. Guess I'll have to keep looking for another way out of this room. Seems like a logical next step. Satisfying. Right, let's hit the pub. The bloody beeping's getting louder. Can't be good. What in the name of all things, Bran? Oh, hell. Oh, I can't even be asked running for me life. Well, anything? No, nothing at all. Wait, we're going to need another volunteer. Ah, unlucky. Oh well, job done, people. Pack up and move out. Let's see the pub, lads. What? What about the hostages? And Hector? Sir, look at the mess of that building. No one's coming out of there alive now, are they? It's a shame about Hector. He'll be missed. Bright side, sir. Terrorist also dead. Victory in its own cruel way. Well, well, I suppose, but... You've been through a lot today, sir. Why don't we head back to the station, pour ourselves a couple of celebratory brandies fit for two heroes, eh? Oh, yes. Brandy. Lead on. Perhaps we should commission a commemorative plot in honour of the courageous Hector. Well, we can certainly discuss it, sir. It might be just what the men's lavatories need to give them a lift. There's a chance you're still in there. I'll never lose hope. Oh. Oh. No permanent damage, I hope. Nothing like falling through four floors of masonry to put perspective on a hangover. I'm never going to complain about a night out on the piss ever again. Oh, fix the crick in me back though. Small victories. Cripes, have I lost weight? Oh, bugger, Rachel, it's a bloody massacre. There were hostages in here. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Just a stack of old dummies. Bugger me, that's still a bit weird. I can always use an extra hand. <laughs> I've got one hand in me pocket and the other one is... Bugger, I'm out of cigarettes. Isn't it ironic? The remains of that rifle. I should probably grab it for forensics, assuming I'll get out of here alive. Rifle didn't survive the trip down, but forensics might still be able to pull something off it. Fresh air coming in from outside. Oi! Anybody out there? Well, those things together, not bloody lightly. Rickety, but they'll probably hold. 
fingers crossed the rest of the bleeding building's more useful than this room. Even if I went up, I'd still end up in a basement. Oh, that is one huge hole. Whatever caused that must have been extremely heavy and travelling at... Oh. There's a whole other room over there, but there's a bloody great hole in the way. It's all that's left of that laptop from upstairs. Our tech lab guy will love this. He communicates politely with anything that isn't human. Not exactly the cleanest, but any port in a storm. According to my chiropractor, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, I won't shift. That inch pin's holding it solid. Not exactly the cleanest, but any port in a storm. Thank God, I'm bursting out both sides. Uh, you may want to avert your eyes. <laughs> Please, Hector. Anything. Just any little sign. Let me know you're alive. <gasps> I recognize that. Hector, it's you. Hick! Hector? Are you there? Come in! Oh, God. Wouldn't go in there for at least a fortnight. Hector? Huh? Did, did that Lou just say my name? Oh, happy day it is, you. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> this is a new one. Even for me. Hector? It's me, Lambert. Oh, Lambert, for a minute there I was... Oh, never mind. Put one of the demolition boys on so they can get me out of here. Uh, can't. They've, they've uh, gone home. They what? Well, when I say home, I mean pub. Look, don't worry, boss. I'm on this. I've got sledgehammers, explosives, screwdrivers, coloured keycards. Everything we need to get you out of this jam sandwich is right here in the trusty van. Thank God. You mean for once I don't have to come up with some kind of improvised solution using only discarded objects? Lambert? Lambert? You still there? Lambert? Oh. <laughs> Actually, boss... Buggeration, Lambert. What have you done wrong this time? I I'm gonna get cracking on that improvising thing you mentioned. Brill, super cop. If I need you again, which I seriously doubt, I'll just come and yell at this turd. Ah, uh, whatever makes you feel better, sir. I've run out. Sweet, merciful Hubert H. Christmas on a mechanical bull. Why can't things ever be easy? Okay, Lambert, it's the moment you've been waiting for. Time to shine. Hector's trapped, time is running out, the rest of the squad has gone home, and you're flying solo. Plus, you've lost your truck full of tools, so your only weapons are your keen sense of observation and your wits. Oh, crumbs. Hector's doomed. Oh, that's so clever. Not much out that way, but still might be worth a look. seems to be shaking a bit. Oh, crumbs! There's something in there. Oh, what if it's a badger? I hate badgers. Don't be frightened. I'm a police officer. Uh, police, I'm about to open the boot. Hands where I can see them. I believe I asked you to show me your hands. <coughs> Come again, sir? <coughs> I beg your
your pardon? Mm. I'm having trouble understanding you. Mm, mm, mm. You're not making any sense. Mm, 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 mm. I'm afraid you'll have to speak up. I'm sorry, I didn't get any of that. Mm, 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 mm. Is there anything I can do to help? Mm, mm, mm. Should I appoint you a translator? Mm. Are you in need of assistance? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, never mind. You seem a little busy right now. Mm. The man appears to have stuck tape over his mouth. I do that sometimes when I can't shut up. Sir, I'm going to attempt to remove the tape so that we may converse freely. To do so, I may come in contact with your face. Do you wish for me to proceed? Mm -mm. I'll ask again. Do you wish for me to proceed? Mm -mm. I'll assume you mean yes. If you're harmed in this process, you may make a report to my superior. Oh, <coughs> oh thank me lucky flipping stars for flip sake. Me life's in the hands of officer git for brains. Mm, not even a thank you. What day is it? Um, Tuesday, I think. No, yes, definitely Tuesday. Tuesday. What is it, morning, afternoon? It's 3.49 and 26 seconds, post-meridian. Oh, is that all? I've barely been in here an hour. And there I go already, urinating in my own trousers. I'll oh, flip me. Is there anything I can offer in the way of assistance? I could murder a jam roly poly. Got it. Maybe a bowl of custard, a spoon, and a flipping ropes off. Right. What can I do to make you more comfortable? Oh, I don't know. Foot massage might be nice. Coming right? Oh, all right, silly us. Maybe just the ropes then, eh? Would you care for a refreshing beverage? Oh, flick me, I sure would. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, well, back to work. If I may, how'd you end up here? Which part? Left for dead in the boot of an 86 larder? I don't know, really. Well, I kind of do, but I'm a little confused myself. See, I was supposed to meet this little geezer for swapsies by the toilets at Cottage Park. You know the ones? Yeah, you look the sort. Anyway, I had the thing in me handbag. The thing? Yeah, the thing I was supposed to swap for the flipping cash, right? What thing? Look, it's not important to the story. In any case, I'm going along past the beef mart when this car pulls up on the footpath. This car? Yeah, this car. This gorilla lumbers out. Which gorilla? He ain't here, thank Flip. Anyway, this gorilla steps out of the car and hits me square in the face with half a chocolate muffin. Huh? Save your questions to the end. Anyway, I'm out cold. I wake up here. That's the end. A real gorilla? No, not a real gorilla, just a big turd in a suit. Wait, was it a gorilla or a turd now? I need to know for my report later. It was a gorilla made of turds wearing a suit. Hmm, should make for an easy identification line-up. I'm still curious about this thing. What thing? The thing! What thing? I'll forget it. Forgive me if this appears rude, but is there a peculiar smell about you? I've been in here a while. I probably smell like all kinds of bodily fluids. Unless, of course, you're referring to the petrol. Ah, oh, yes, bodily fluids. I loathe that smell, especially my own. I didn't know how long I was going to be in there. I had to draw a line in the sand eventually. Yes, but you'd have done the same. <laughs> OK. Why would they douse you in petrol and then not set fire to you? I don't know, but I flipping well wasn't going to ask. 
Stay calm. I'm all over this. Oh, Brill. I'll just wait here then. <laughs> Those make great hat. Driver must have been distracted by something shiny. Happens to me all the time. I may have found a way in. Hmm, I may have found a way in. I just need to find a way to pry that cover off. They really should have removed the handle before dumping it. Imagine if a child got in there. It reminds me of my last job. In my experience, there's always handy stuff in discarded fridges. Young Dapper Sir, don't you jig for a penny? Oh, that's so cute. I don't think I have a penny, though. Have you got change of a tenner? A tenner? What's that? I ain't never heard of that much money, sir. Oh, oh well, could have used a bit of dancing today. It's been a bit of a downer. It's really rather spacious in there. Oh, poor little fella. Sometimes, I find an old button and pretend it's a sweet tea. Why were you hiding in that revolting germ-soaked rubbish tip? Sir, that's my unassuming abode. Oh, and uh, what a lovely home it is. I, I like what you've done with the dirt. Thank you kindly, sir. Does your mother know you live in a fridge? Ain't got no mother or father. Ain't never had one. They was paupers too. Me dad died in a stampede during a sausage roll giveaway. Me mum died in childbirth at the same sausage roll giveaway. That was you, the sausage roll baby of Clapper's Reek. That's me. I am rightly. That incident brought much needed attention to the bylaws regarding sausage roll giveaway crowd control. Well done, you. Guess I'm a bit of a public hero then, eh? What age are you? I have no accurate knowledge of my age. Never saw me birth certificate. Nor, in fact, have I even had a birthday. <laughs> I'm welling up now. <laughs> what age do you think I'd be, sir? Well, it'd be a guess. Looking at you, I'd say you were about... three? Hey, how about we crown today your birthday? Happy third birthday, smelly trash boy. Hip, hip. <laughs> Playing in fridges can be very dangerous. I told you, sir, I live in it. Aren't you worried about suffocating? Some nights I leave it open a crack when I sleep. That's when the rats come. <laughs> How'd you end up living here? Well, I used to live in a bird box until the neighbours started complaining about the noise of my tap dancing. What do you do? I tried to tap quieter, but it's just not the same. I've got to let it out. Could you dance for me again? <laughs> I don't suppose you've got any hand sanitizer in there? Oi! Are you making fun of my disability? Oh, no, it's just I wouldn't want to catch anything off you. I mean, get my hands dirty. Uh, oh, God, I feel really itchy. Could you step back a bit? What happened to your hand? I used to shine shoes at the boot blackening factory until the operations manager took me hand off for thieving post-it notes from the staff stationery cupboard. Oh, how horrid. Bojo cast me out, and now I make a less than meagre wage on the streets of Clapper's Reek, utilising my skills as an independent shoeshine boy. You still shine shoes with the, uh, that? Well... The hook does seriously impede my ability to shine shoes without leaving huge scuffs. 
And between you and me, I have taken off a fair share of toes. Oh, but I'm really, really good. I could shine you now if you like. No, no, just did mine this morning. Oh? Uh, how's the shoe shining market in general? Not too good these days. Aside from the hook thing, too many trainers out there, you see? Oh, yeah. Guess so. Gets me enough coinage to occasionally afford a tin of chopped tomatoes for me own survival, though. Well, that and the dancing, of course. Fare thee well. Only 22 and already Senior Engineer of the Trolley Maintenance Department at Valueland. Oh, this trolley's seen better days. Hey, can I have this old trolley? It depends. Will you be my daddy? Oh, well. Oh, go on. You seem such a nice fella. You can take it. But remember where you got it. Sure thing. Right next to the revolting germ soap rubbish tip. Thanks, little sport. <laughs> it reminds me of my last job. I'm not going in there without rubber gloves, thank you very much. Hey, I thought we cordoned off this area. I should know, I was appointed official cordoner. Mix gave me a sash and everything. <gasps> she looks lost. That, or she's been mauled by a wild bear. She looks the worst for wear. Must have ate a dodgy pilchard or something. Citizens, please retreat from the exclusion zone and structurally unsound building. You police? You're gonna arrest us for being too sexy? <laughs> Sorry, darling, I keep the volume down. Where are you girls looking to get to? Marital Registration Office on Gilbert Road. Today's our wedding day. Well, shouldn't you be off getting ready for the big day? We are ready, you plonker. What, you say we look like a couple of skanks? Well... She's all set to walk down the aisle and I'm her virgin bridesmaid, OK? Just need to get there first. Can't you walk to your destination? Ask her again when you've been dancing in heels to hardcore trance till 7am. I'll do that. What's the matter with her feet? She insisted on jamming her bunion riddle plates into pumps four sizes too small. Well, I can see how that would be uncomfortable. Oh, you'd be sorry. You got fat feet, Kaylee. Fat. I always said that. When will you admit it, dumb swaz? Oh. Is there still a chance you'll make it in time? We should have been there an hour ago. Grim's too good for her. She don't even love him. Anyway, she's got a thing going with Big Glenn. He'll not care if she don't turn up. Well, no hurry then. Well, kinda. We arranged it so the wedding service wouldn't clash with today's episode of the Jeremy Carl Show. If we don't get a set of wheels, we'll miss it. Miss the show? No, miss the wedding. There's no way I'm missing Kyle. Find out today who the real father of my neighbour Kelly's cousin's baby is. I'll see if I can arrange transport for you. Mate, if you can get us a set of wheels, I'll give you ten minutes behind the tip. I don't accept bribes, and I'm a bit of a germaphobe, to be honest. Uh, I'm referring to the rubbish tip. I didn't mean... Oh, God, this isn't going well. Do you young ladies need assistance? We've been waiting on a taxi for four hours until someone here just told me she forgot to phone it. Oh, uh, yeah, not phoned. <gasps> you girls better be on your way. This is not a safe area to be hanging around. I can look after myself. Anyone tries it on with me, I'll ram a stiletto in their ear. I'm scared and there's no one to hold me. Your friend there, did she eat a dodgy pilchard or something? Nah, she's fine. Only she went and spent her entire student loan on tequila shots. Didn't you, Kaylee? <laughs> yeah, she'll be right. How did you girls get here? 
Oh my god, do you want to hear a so funny story? Is there a princess in it? Princess? Bogart Kaylee! We totally forgot about her when we stopped for a piddle at the minimarket in Little Beirut. God, I hope she crashed behind the skip instead of trying to find the number six on her own. Or we'll see if she turns up at the reception. Don't really like her anyway. I like your story. Do you have any more? So Keisha, right? What about her? Thinking it'd be a top idea to hijack the party bus. Bunch of pensioners outside the chippy didn't know what hit him. I tell you, those blue tabs that get anyone up. Best hen night by far. Woo! -hoo! I like your story. Do you have any more? Well, last night was well rough. You should have seen our Melindo booking Bronco and the VIP. Flew right off into the Siggy machine. She needed 17 stitches and Bronco was well embarrassed. I like your story. Do you have any more? Oh my god, Letitia so OD'd on slimming pills before coming out. I told her you weren't supposed to mix those with triple pina coladas. Ended up going blind in one eye. And then she was like, nah, 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 the rest of the night bumping into stuff and that. She was like 15 minutes into getting it on of the gents when she realised she was with two guys instead of one. It's on Facebook. I like your story. Do you have any more? Well, last night was well rough. You should have seen our Melindo booking Bronco when the flew right off into the she needs Toodaloo. To Ooh, no wonder her feet are bleeding. Could I please just borrow your shoe? I'll bring it right back, good as new. Yeah, that Curly. Can he have your shoe? <gasps> Go on, then. I saw something like this once in a torture museum. After seeing her feet, I can see why. My arms are like cocktail sticks with squares of cheese on the end. I can't knock down a wall with my bare hands. That pipe looks just big enough for something other than Hector to fit through. That pipe looks... Here you go, one set of wheels. You serious, darling? I may be wasted, but even I can count to four. Maybe I could use this shoe to pry off this vent. is going to be very displeased. Why do I always do stupid things when it comes to women's shoes? I can't go down there. Then there'd be two of us stuck inside a busted building. On the other hand, if I were down there, I could give Hector a comforting hug. That's something. I just don't think that would do any good. Lambert, come in, Lambert. Get some. Right, listen up, I've got a plan. Oh, super duper, what is it? Deep in the pipes of this old loo, there must be several decades worth of encrusted toxic fecal matter and methane build-up. Not to mention what I just deposited. You've already lost me. This toilet's waste pipe probably runs right down the wall of this building, right? We're gonna turn this bog into some sort of a bomb. A pipe bomb. But you're gonna have to find a way to get me a few things to give this impulsive scheme a fighting chance. Ready, eager and able, boss. Hit me with the shopping list. Well, as hearty as my excrement is, it might not be quite enough to take down a wall, so you're gonna need to find me something highly flammable. A flammable thing. Check. Then we'll need something that could act as a fuse. Fuse. Check. And I'll also need something to light it with. Right. Anything else, boss? <sniffs> well, a Hawaiian breeze room spray would also be nice, but not essential. Over and out. Where are the
the hell did this come from? What is it? And why couldn't it have been a sausage roll? This thing's got the tensile strength of a railroad spike, but it's the width of an Ardox nail. Surely I can find a use for it, whatever it is. Do with a view. Brings back cheerful memories of all the doors I've kicked through on raids. Perfect. That ought to hold me weight. Well, the weight of an average human, anyway. Last room standing. No sign of an exit, but bloody hell. This place looks like an abattoir in a blimmin' Quincy What's-His-Face movie. Finally, a clue I can relate to. Is this where the judges sit to critique the bloodbath? Silly terrorist. You can't use a mop to get bloodstains out. What you need is red wine, and then white wine to get the red wine out. A good murder investigator always carries his own mop. Looks like congealed blood. Feels like congealed blood. Don't even want to think about where all this came from. Much as I hate doing things by the book, I should probably take a sample of this for evidence. Oh, here we are. Perhaps when they find me one day in the far future, they can pry it from me cold, dead fingers to solve the case. What the hell is Clapfest? What the hell is... Sit lap. This place just keeps getting weirder. That way leads to certain death. It's one of them cleaning buckets with wheels on. I can't get any closer to the hole or I'll fall through. Can't snag it. Need to hook it with something. It's a small sample of a brownish stain, sopped up by a bit of rubbish and shoved into my pocket with my bare hands. Just like how they collect evidence on CSI. Thank goodness I got to this plastic knife before it fell into the plastic hands of them plastic dummies in the basement. I can see some daylight way down there. Wonder what lies on the other end. Let's see what happens when I do this. Blimey, I think that went all the way outside. Hey Lambert, I'm sending myself out to you one piece at a time. No! <laughs> Oh my! I thought it was a real hand for a second. Oh, that's quite handy. <laughs> it's a tiny plastic knife. It's part of my job to keep knives off our city streets. Now I can get a high five whenever I like. Here you are, little fella. Try this. It, it's so beautiful. I love it so. You don't need that nasty old hook anymore. Oh, me old mate Hook, he's been a real friend all these years. A horrible, nasty, scabby, chafing friend. <laughs> old Bojo's gonna choke on his roast pheasant when he sees the line-up at my shoeshine stand. Oh, thank you, sir. Anything you need from me, you can have it. The hook? It's yours. Oh, 
<laughs> Isn't it great when you do someone a favour and they think you're doing it for them, but you're really doing it for you? It's win-win. Ah, oh, matey, I'm a mighty pirate. I shouldn't have done that. That was really insensitive. Could you dance for me again? <laughs> Fare thee well. Hold still. <laughs> Don't cut yourself. I oh, know. <laughs> I'm not even wearing safety gloves. <laughs> there. You're free to go. Compliments of the Clappers Rig Police Service. Boy, I don't get to say that very often. Oh, you silly fellow. You never told me you had cement shoes. You can't go home like that. Listen, mate, you've done enough. Thanks for getting me this far. Hold on, I'm sure I can help. Let's be honest with ourselves here. It took you a stupid amount of time to realise I was wearing tape. And then it took you half a donkeys before you could slice a flipping rope. By the time you've wrapped your head round this one, I could have walked back to town. In fact, probably quicker if I do. Toodaloo. Fritters! I never did find out what that thing was. Or where he got those nice pyjamas. Ah, uh, sir, you've forgotten your... Oh, well, finders keepers. You're welcome. I could practice my knots. No spare tile, no emergency blanket, no flares, no tin of soup. That's living on the edge. Oh, he's got a tail light out. That's a traffic hazard. What's he got there? A tiny matchstick house. You don't think I could have a few of those matches, do you? No chance. It's delicate. The old thing could fall apart if you look at it wrong. But if I could just look away, avert your eyes. You don't think I could have a few of those matches, do you? No chance. It's... But if I could look away... Just wide enough to fit inventory items. I could use this rope to hang myself. This thing reeks of petrol. A hook? Yo ho ho! Now where's the sodding rum? Cripes! Have I lost weight? What, no elevator? Well, I'm hooked. I could go fishing for sharks with this. Really, really dumb sharks. Gotcha! The wheels look a bit loose. Nice set of wheels. Nice set.
Hey, nice find, Hector. Two and two make four. Two. Four. Yeah, that's right. Surprise! Look what I fixed up nice. A set of wheels. Aren't you a darling? At the risk of sounding a little weird, are either of you carrying anything explosive? Yeah, just this jumbo-sized bottle of Last Blood, poor fans. Right, jump in, Kaylee. Whoa! Oh, for Christ's sakes! Come on, Kaylee. You're gonna make the wedding after all. Congratulations, he's a very lucky man. Return it to Value Land, you'll get your pound back. Is your hair missing that special spark? Try Lust Blowed. Warning, once applied, avoid contact with sparks. I wonder if that thing's got auto defrost. You don't think I could have a few of those matches, do you? No chance. It's delicate. The old thing could fall apart. But if I could just look away. Are you okay, little chap? It's the third time this week I've had to eat stones for dinner. But yes, I'm okay. Say, so, what's that little wooden thing you're playing with? You like it? I made it myself from 483 matchsticks. It's a scale model of my dream house, complete with tiny little match family. Oh, that mustn't have been easy with a hook for a hand. It took me six years, nights and weekends. This new hand, I should be done in an hour, though. Just think, one day you could build yourself a real house out of really big matches. That'd almost be my dream come true. All I'd need then is a family who'd adopt me. <laughs> so, this house, why, uh, my only dream in life is to live in a humble house with a family I can call me own. Maybe with one of them flat screen 3D TVs in my bedroom. I know that's never going to happen, you see. You never know. Hold on to your dreams, I say. I always dreamed I'd be a policeman and look at me now, poking about in a soiled trash heap. <laughs> you really shouldn't be playing with matches, you know. But they're fun. But they're dangerous. Yeah, but they're also fun. What would I need to do for you to get a match? Keeping in mind I already improved your life with that hand. Well, sir, there's only one other thing I could possibly want. But you've been so kind already, I'm afraid to ask. Go on, it's okay. The worst I can do is laugh in your face. Well, will you be my daddy? Isn't there a three-day waiting period? <laughs> well, my wife Philomena's always talked about kids. You... you mean it? She's always saying I'll never do anything right and I can't make a decision on my own. Imagine her surprise if I came home with a new son. Okay, I'll do it. Call me Papa. Oh, sir, you wouldn't be putting me on, would you? Not a chance, son. You won't be needing your dream house anymore. My house may not be made of matches, but it's a match made in heaven for a lucky young boy like you. Oh, Daddy, I thought this day would never come. Don't hug me until you've had a long bath. Uh, until then, make your way down to number 73 Pillock's Way. You'll know it by the blue door and stone cladding. Oh, just wait until you see it, boy. Instead of a house inside a fridge, there's a fridge inside the house. Oh, Father, finally I'm a real boy. I'll meet you there. Philomena's going to be so surprised. She can help me pick a name for the little fella. Wait, hang on. 
Oh, little tyke's stolen my wallet. That's all right. I'll get them back off him later. Back at the house. Joys of parenting. They're always up to something, those rascals. A tiny matchstick house with a matchstick family is rather poignant, really. Need to be really careful with it. It's like I'm carrying his dreams. There. It's exquisite. Hey, Pa, I'm sending something down to you. It's very special. It took my son six years to make. Please be very careful with it. Oh, if only I had a cigarette right now. Oh, if only I had a... Hairspray? Bloody Lambert, he tries so hard. Great. Now I can do a spot of quiff maintenance before I talk to the press outside, waiting to interview Hector, the town hero. No time for quiff maintenance. I've got a toilet to detonate. Weird. This match has a little smiley face on it. Probably shouldn't mess with this any more than I already have. I'll need to run this by ballistics if I ever get out. That'll make a crude fuse. All I need now is something with a bit of kick. Just need to light it. Lambert, I'm about to light the fuse. Stay back from the wall. Muffled shot is my fault in his muffled. Stay back from Hector, the muffled. I can't the hear you. I'm losing the signal. I'm coming closer to the wall. Fuse is lit. Retreat. From the wall. What's that? A treat from the mall? No time for that. Wall explosion imminent. By now, you should be well away from the wall, safely hidden behind a large object. I can now physically get no closer to the wall. Please repeat in. <laughs> You look like crap. It really burns. I think I've got some in my mouth. <laughs> right, let's shake a leg. We've got a bastard to catch. Have you got any hand sanitizer? No, Lambert. There just weren't any hostages. So, you're saying the dummies blew up the building? No, you spaz, you're not getting it at all. So, were the dummies... Gloria, frit not, I'm alive. Back in action with nothing more than a bruised shin. Hmm? Oh, hey, Hector. Thought you were dead. Hey, Lambert. Hiya. What, that's it? I'll return from the grave and all I get is a, hey, Hector. Thought your clinical waste bin would be overflowing with soppy tissues at my demise. No, just the usual brain matter and bullet fragments. Anyway, better get back to it. These bones don't saw themselves. So what now, boss? Well, got a few bits of evidence to run by forensics here and the tech lab across the hall. Then I'm going to single-handedly track down this son of a dog end. What about me? Can I help? You? Oh. Uh, why don't you, uh, you yank through some town records or something? Find out everything you can about that building. The building we just blew up? Oh, right. I'm on it! Murray? 
I don't know what any of this stuff does. I wonder what my head weighs. I didn't realise Gloria was into astronomy. Ah, there's victim number 11 from the Borcott bludgeonings. We've been looking for that guy for weeks. An alphabetised smorgasbord of human cruelty. That is one big heap of dead negotiators. That's Gloria, head of forensics. And Taylor Forensics. <laughs> so, you're really not overcome with joy to see me alive? If you really had died, deep down I would have known. Oh, Gloria, I always knew there was a bond between us. Plus, sooner or later all the stiffs get rolled in here. Would have run a scalpel through you eventually, eh, Hector? Here, I got you this. Oh, Hector! I found a massive pool of congealed blood at a crime scene. Got you a sample. Tell me, Hector, when taking this sample, did you hermetically seal it in an evidence bag and note the time and date? Uh, no. I, uh, folded it up and put it in my back pocket. Oh, here. Give us a look. Why, Hector, is this your blood? Ball bags, I hope not. There were gallons of it. What makes you think it's mine? Because it's 100% barbecue sauce. Slap me ass with a trap. You're right. Hector, I thought you were the kind of man who could smell a barbecue from the other side of a paper mill. <clears throat> Let's not forget I've been in the vicinity of three explosions already today, and one was a toilet. Well, I'd like to help age, but the old crime computer doesn't exactly have a search by condiments classification. That's all right. Uh, gee, I'll take this one from here. Barbecue sauce, eh? A chemical compound of Worcestershire, garlic, capsicia, pectin, sodium benzoate, and sweet, sweet love. No two sauces are alike, but it takes a refined sense of smell to pick out the minutiae. And while my onker may be on the fritz, there is someone I know who just might be able to help. Hey, Gloria, want to see what I've got in me trousers? Am I going to need a microscope? Dirt it, it's pretty big. Oh my, you know how to impress a girl. Hmm, there's trace evidence of something odd. It's an adhesive polymer composed primarily of nitrocellulose, mica, venosophenone 1, and toluene dissolved in a solvent of butyl acetate. Butyl ac what? If I'm not mistaken, all these things can be found in a specific blend of pigments and adhesives to produce a desired attraction effect in courting rituals, or simply for presentation. No. This looks to me like a trace coating vial number 69105 of Aphrodite's Latex Nighty. Oh, with the what now? Common household nail varnish. Oh, blimmin' hell, woman, why didn't you just say that in the first place? I should arrest you for impeding my investigation. We don't get much drama around here. So the terrorist is a woman? Not necessarily. Cross-dresser, then? No, it's not like there's concentrations around the trigger. It's more of an overall coating, like the varnish and gun were housed in the same location. Guns and beauty products. Where would I find those together? Hmm. What? Oh, come on, don't make me drag it out of here with tweezers and a cotton swab. I'd start at Doreen's. Let me give you the address. Doreen's? And don't be shy about picking me up one of those bath bombs to say thanks. Pull this from the building. Can you get anything off it? Hector, Hector, Hector. Do I look like a robot? No. Well, in this UV light, you do a bit. Go show that to Solid Base over in Tech. I'm sure he can fit it in between keystrokes. There's Harvey, Phillips, Kinderman. Holy mother, the old men's choir is in there. This year's nativity play's gonna suck eggs. So, Gloria. Hector, don't get me wrong. I'm really happy to see you, really. 
I've just got this pile of stiffs to work through before Corrie comes on. So if you've got something specific you need me to look at, hand it over. Otherwise, I'd better be getting back to it. Right. Some other time, then. Solid Base's technical lab is across the hall. <sighs> Suppose I'd better pay a visit to the Grand Geek across the hall. I hate that smug bastard. He rules over that filthy computer lab like a cockroach on a mouldy bagel. Solid Base. Detective Inspector. Standard issue of his phone. Standard issue, my vestigial tail. I've souped that puppy up into a quantum phone. Oh, impressive. And what exactly does a quantum phone do? Ugh, look what, it's just a phone. Oh, a taster of nerd humour, I see. Plans for world domination going well? We're partway through phase two. Oh, well done, you. Out from Boneville. Didn't know you were into man porn. I'll have you know that's one of the finest... Already bored. I think the Matrix has him. Don't touch that. Deep inside his own mind, he's probably an orc or something. Orc, please, level 37 wave on baby. With the dexterity of a Valkyrie, if you catch my meaning. I really don't. Hey, can I ask you something? No, you cannot have my password to adult flirt ground. What exactly do you do here again? I make covert and high-tech spy gadgets for the elite Kung Fu fighting force that is the Clapper's Reek Police Service. Elite Kung Fu fighting force? On Tuesdays I'm a Viking. Thought you might like a bit of a challenge. Challenge? Please. Alright, let's see what you've got. Where'd you get this? Crime scene. Oh, I thought this might have been your personal laptop which you shot after all your crops died on Farmville. What's Farmville? Here we go. Mejo Corrupto, obviously, given the state, but still a few blocks snaggable with a wee bit of inter. What are you doing? If I attempt to explain it to you, what are the chances you'll comprehend? About the same as speaking Portuguese to a Chelsea bank. Yep, okay. Few nuggets of infotainment just floated to the top. One, all the personal data's been corrupted. I've got no names, addresses, phone numbers, accounts, nothing. Probably stored on a bit of the laptop that got shot. Yes, it was probably stored on the bit of the laptop that got shot. Two, in what little data that is on here, there's a number of references to the Clappers Reek Police Service. It's got CWPS all over the place. Weird. I concur. I'll keep poking at it, see if it leads anywhere. Third, I was able to run a trace on the guy's IP. IP? Oh, internet protocol address. Lost. Everyone who uses the internet is assigned an IP address. I've got his. And what good is that? Well, in the time it took me to say I've got his, I hacked into all the ISPs in the city and tracked his virtual IP address to a physical address. Does it have a door? One that a real policeman like me can knock on and collect answers. And in the time it took you to ask such a dumb question, I already transferred the coordinates to your GPS. My GP what? Google it. You can keep that. Already did. Never thought I'd say this, but it smells better in forensics. Maybe I'll go back talk to Gloria. I'll feel more intelligent round her. What's the matter? Too smart in here for you? No, it's probably just because she's a woman. <laughs> Maybe I'll get Lambert a tea. Nah, no, I'm busy. How's the building history coming along, Lambert? Well, so far, I've made a list of all the things I need to find. What's the list? It says history of building at the top. Find anything useful? Yeah, the keys to Wadsworth Datsun. He sold that for scrap 11 years ago. Oh, still, I'm sure he'd be glad to get them back. What have you learned from city records? I think the file clerk may have a learning disorder. 
This case is grinding me down. Whenever I'm down in the dumps, I go out and buy myself a new tie. I've always wondered where you got so many. As much as I loathe asking your opinion, I could use your help with this case. Really, boss? Wow, well, I love to help. What's the problem? I've gotten nowhere with this source lead yet. Oh, sorry, boss. Want me to come with you? I'm really good at interrogations now. I might even come up with questions you never thought of. No, last time we played bad cop, crap cop, it didn't work out so well. I'll just go ask around some more questions until I get somewhere. Never mind, I'll work it out myself. Oh my holy hell, who comes up with this stuff? One for the Americans, they love the blooming phone boxes. I don't know why, they're just blooming red for God's sake. The furry furnace, catchy. That guy looks strangely familiar. Stand aside, Kong. <coughs> why not? It's not like you've got a cue here. Dress. You want me to wear a dress? Code. You serious? A dress code? Here. Yeah. Shirt. Ah, oh, figures. The one day of me life I sacrificed me shirt for the good of the town. And look where it gets me. I'm gonna need to speak to the manager. <coughs> hey, have you guys got internet? <coughs> You're hindering a police investigation. <laughs> Are you happy with your broadband? <laughs> Why, a gentleman's club. I'd like to partake in the pleasures of your fine establishment, my good man. <laughs> oh, goodness me, I've dropped 20 quid in the gutter over there. Would you mind picking it up for me? <laughs> <sighs> What's your dress code again? Shut up. Got it. Yeah. I'm leaving before this gets ugly. Doreen's nail bar and army surplus. Beauty products and guns. I just sprang me brain thinking about it. And while we're at it, who are these clowns? Drip for Dush. Catchy. Seems a bit shifty. Wouldn't have expected that from someone in the blood trade. Excuse me. Is it? Seems a bit shifty. Customer. Excuse me. Is it? Oh, someone give that guy a Nutri bar. I've never minded the sight of blood. Lambert, on the other hand, faints at a red crayon. Hot diggity, you're pale. Did you forget to remove your shirt before adding the bleach? <laughs> Been sitting on this plastic chair all day, hooked up, waiting for my art to pump some blood into my arm to earn a bit of hard cash. And I thought my day was crap. How long have you been sitting here? Almost an hour. And the bag's only a quarter full. I'm on to my fifth bag. I brought bodies to the morgue that were fresher than you. Hey, you seem like a nice guy. Think you could help me out a bit? I oh, know I'm gonna regret this, but how? Uh... Just a pint or two, just to get me through to the end of the week. Are we talking lager here? No, blood please. Just enough to fill this bag, then I can stop at the chippy on the way home. Your kids need a father more than they need chips. They'll manage. I don't give blood. I usually spill other people's if they start to get on my wick. Go on, give me a drop. As a freebie, I'll throw in the office stationery. How do you like a box of only one year out of date wall planners? I'll pass. Or I'll hit you up with a couple of packets of US letter printer paper. Blasphemy! 
Good old British A4 is all I'll ever use. Same print of paper as the Queen of England herself. Are you seriously asking me for blood? What's in it for me? Oh, come on, I'm not a bad man. Help me out. If I was in your place, I'd do anything to help a friend in need. Give you the shirt off me back, I would. He would, you know. Nice guy, that Barry. I oh, don't mention it, Ted. You say something about the shirt off your back? Well, what about the office supplies? Multi-pack of fluorescent highlighters? I distinctly heard you say the shirt off your back. But... You did say shirt, Barry. You can't backpedal on a verbal contract. Ah, fooey. I suck at negotiation. Yeah, explains why you're still trying to shift those highlighters. So if I give you some blood, you'll give me a shirt. Deal? But... You did say shirt, Barry. Ah, fooey. I suck at negotiation. So, what brings you to the drip for dosh? You would not believe how much the demand for door-to-door -door office supplies has plummeted. I blame the internet. But then I blame the internet for just about everything. I've turned to selling my own rapidly diminishing blood. If I don't, my wife will be forced to shop at Lidl. Look, I've already established you're a loser. There's no need to give me the backstory to prove it. How's the door-to-door -door game these days? Oh, are you interested in buying? I've still got loads of top-notch stock remaining. You look like a man who's into his arts and crafts. How about a nice craft pack for those rainy days alone? Arts and what? I'm a man's man, you pansy arse. It includes a nice set of coloured pipe cleaners, a pair of left-handed safety scissors and some sequins. Well, sounds like a dandy night in. I don't have much need for office supplies in my line of work. How about a multi-pack of 500 white sticky labels? A pack of still-working highlighter pens? I can hook you up with a human-sized laminating machine. Please, anything. Look, would you stop trying to sell me office supplies? I'm never in my office, and when I am, it's only to refill my glass from the various beverages stored in my credenza. Could I interest you in a new credenza? No. It's been real. I wonder if they sell nail guns. <laughs> Gun used in a crime? Drop it here. I wonder if they sell nail... Oh, steal yourself. Who knows what's in there? Then, shock horror! The bags and beyond sales assistant lifts the last Gigi Logie out of the window and sells it? No! I knew I practically died right there! What did you do? Well, what any girl would, of course. I waited patiently for the cow to exit the shop and I shot her in a fat leg. You didn't. I did her a favour. She would have been the Queen of Ming with that handbag and her permatan. What did you use? The semi-auto? Yup, good old dependable semi. You're absolutely right. Very practical. I can tell you now it'll come in super handy when sale season rolls round. <clears throat> Welcome to Doreen's Nail Bar and Army Surplus. Clapper's Rig's foremost destination for all your manicure and military needs. I'm an alpha male! Get me out of here! The opposite of scary female. An actual sun lamp. Why doesn't she just spray paint herself orange like everyone else? It's full of nail clippings. Ew! Have to shake out the nail clippings somewhere along the way. My fake bake. Got to look hot for my date later. Good day, miss. It's Mrs. Actually. Mrs. Leisha Pelchester of the Pelchesters. Perhaps you've heard of me. Weren't you in uh, Clardy with a chance of meat and balls? Uh, no. Shame. That's a family favourite of mine. Wait a second. Polchester? Shortly Polchester of Clatters United? The very same. 
Oh, shorty. I've lost many a shilling to that overpaid, groin injury and overrated public tosspot. Say, wasn't he the one that got the entire English woman's football team pregnant during a 2007 World Cup training session in the Algarve? Uh, you didn't believe that story, did you? You're probably one of those guys that reads the papers. So, you're the latest bit of crumpet that's masquerading as Shorty's missus, then? The latest? The one and only, you mean? The love of Shorty's life? But I thought Shorty was shacked up with some brunette tart that used to present the coveted 3 to 4 p.m. jewellery section of the PVC shopping channel. Just once I wish I could have been that four-carat sovereign pendant depicting the entire cast of Hotel Babylon she was running her fingers over. It was eight carat, thank you very much. That was you? Well, bugger me. So, you and Shorty are happy pair, then? Totally. The press even have a name for us, you know, like Brangelina or Benifer. They call us Shisha. Hmm. Good job your name wasn't Kitty. <laughs> silly. My name is Leisha. Getting ahead to Dome Makeover. Big night planned. Every night's a big night when you're me, darling. Tonight I've managed to pull some strings and get us a romantic table for two at Sexy Chic Shayla Buffet. Bedroom eyes from Shorty and a steaming trough of warm meat. That's actually on my bucket list. Honey, it's on everybody's bucket list. Ta, darling. Mwah, mwah. Come in handy if you are being hunted down by trained killers in the women's wear section of S&M. Happens. Buggeration puts the twat weapon stash to shame. Merkins, 30% off. What the X are merkin? They're, uh, for women. What for? <laughs> they wear it someplace. Someplace? What, like at the beach or something? Yeah, that's right, fella. The beach. Gift baskets of scented oils for loved ones. Gift baskets of live grenades for loathed ones. Pamper yourself with our soap bars infused with the scent of a freshly fired 12-gauge shotgun and jasmine. Shot in the line of duty while trying to get into a lady's filing cabinet would not sound great right before my 21 gun salute. Scary female alert. I'm Detective Inspector Hector. I'm investigating a terrorist attack that occurred earlier today. Are you now? Well, I don't mind telling you. I have a bit of a thing for the good guys. I'd love to find out what's really uh, behind the badge. Oh, bugger. Not one of these conversations. Are you the sort of person who can find innuendo in everything I say? Well, you know the old expression. I'm sure I don't. Why stop at one entendre when you can make it a double, eh? Would you mind examining an item I have in my possession? Oh, I'll examine anything you like, big stuff. Look, I thought very hard about that last sentence to phrase it in a way that you couldn't possibly think I was flirting with you. If I'd said, would you mind running your hands over me weapon, it would have been a totally different story. I don't know what you're on about. I'll need to know if you've retained any record of who purchased this rifle. Hmm, very bad shape. Hmm. Yeah, I remember this one. Took me a while to get the shaft sprung correctly. I'm sure you don't have that problem, officer. Oh. Do you know who last acquired it? I might. Over there I have a filing cabinet with all the signed sales receipts from the past 30 days. But I operate on a strict privacy guarantee with all my customers. Oh, just what I need. An honest criminal. Seriously, I need that information. I can't just hand over my keys to any man who walks in off the street. I get repeat business because I'm faithful to my customers. I'm just a faithful kind of girl. Except when I'm not. Oh, Christ. Doreen. I like you, Hector. It's undeniable there's chemistry between us. 
The only thing between us is a glass cabinet full of murkings and a sense of awkwardness. You really want access to my private records? Let's just say I'm willing to be persuaded. By records, you actually mean the physical ones with customer signatures on. Oh, it'll be physical, all right. Jeez, you never let up with your flirting, do you? I can assure you that's the last thing I'm doing. Look, it's really important that I get into your filing cabinet. Sorry, you're not getting any access to my private area. Oh, don't say it, don't say it. At least not until you've taken me out to dinner first. <laughs> oh, can't take much more of her. Look, it's really important that I get into your filing cabinet. Sorry, you're not getting any access. Oh, at least. Oh. Oh, are you asking me out? No, you're asking me out. I've got something you want, and you've got something I want. What do I have, dare I ask, that you want? I'd like to learn more about your interrogation techniques. Oh, I'll bring me truncheon. Oh, now you're talking. Isn't there a much less contrived way of gaining access to your files? Afraid not. If you really want to impress me, why don't you take me out for a nice dinner? Depends on what you mean by nice. I know a nice little kebab place down on... Oh, detective. You don't impress a girl with a kebab. I can't believe I'm saying this, but what if it's a particularly thick and meaty one? Gonna have to do better than that. Damn, I was sure that would occur. What sort of services do you offer here? Our services include manicures, pedicures, oiling, barrel scouring, waxing, tanning, reloading, calibrating, head and hand massage, firing pin or hair replacement and therapy. What sort of therapy? Anything from aroma to post-traumatic stress. Do you do gift vouchers? We do. Available on request after a three-day waiting period and full background check. Do you have a license to sell weapons? Of course I do. I'm legal. Barely. I don't need any beauty treatment. Let me see your hands. I'm not comfortable with you touching me. Oh, come on. Just one, then. Oh, nasty. Your skin definitely needs a bit of rejuvenation. We offer an intensive therapy for dry, parched, powder-burned hands. An exfoliating sweet pomegranate hot oil treatment followed by a moisturizing warm towel massage. And a complimentary 23-round extension for your shotgun. I don't need any guns either. If you're unsure, we can make it easy for you. Take our What Firearm Suits Your Lifestyle questionnaire. Any specials today? I recommend the Sniper's Combo. Pick one item of precision artillery and we'll throw in a relaxing eye therapy session and a hand massage. Remember to breathe out as you squeeze the trigger. Any other specials? Surveillance special. That's a pair of night vision goggles and an ear candling. Any other specials? The half pounder. Buy anything 50 caliber or above and you'll receive a free head massage. Knock out the nasty pounding sensation and you'll walk away with that warm all over feeling of safety and relaxation. Any other specials? The improved TD series pistol is very handy. Unlike previous models, it's not like carrying a hairdryer in your pocket. Small and compact enough to fit in any handbag or man bag, yet the grip is secure for easy aim towards your victim. What does TD stand for? If you have to ask, it's not the right gun for you. Any other specials? Free trial of the self-mounted Horny Girl 42. Free trial? Yeah, why not? That's not a gun, that's my nickname on AOL. Oh god, I walked into that one. Just lingering, thanks. I'm an alpha male! Get me out of here! <laughs> Great. Now I smell like lavender.
Better identify myself before I go nicking free samples. That's good advice in any knife-based business. Meat so rank those flies have turned vegan. Mmm, compared to the meat, zapped fly actually smells pretty good. Ooh, pick and mix. Salmonella, E. coli, Staphylococcus. I'm spoilt for choice. The sauce shelf. Anything to cover up the taste. Arse bits in blood. Old Dunderbeck's Mincematic, the meat dealer's equivalent of money laundering. Head bits in blood. I swear that sausage just moved. That's Cadogan Dunderbeck. He'd fill it his grandmother if he slipped him a fiver. Probably suggest a good sauce for her too. <clears throat> I'd like a pound of bollocks, please, my good man. A pound of... Wait a minute! I know that voice! <laughs> Hector, you old truffle pig. Still snuffling around in the offal, I see. How's the bloodlust, beef cheeks? Slaughtered anything airy lately? Well, I never. Old Hector, it's been a while since you graced these parts. You gone veggie or something? Not a chance. Still as carnivorous as ever. The preferred mealtime dish is still meat with a side order of meat, washed down with a glass of meat. <laughs> I take it your lunchtime bite is still the classic Hector sandwich? Indeed it is. One slice of butter bread between two slabs of cooked ham. <laughs> oh, Hector. We shared such fond meat-themed good times. I've yet to meet anyone that appreciates a boneless shin as much as you do. Now, what can I do for your old friend? You've always been my go-to guy on meat-connected cases, right? <laughs> Aye, we've had some fantastic, disgusting times, haven't we? <laughs> You're not kidding. I remember the curious case of the collagen clinic. <laughs> I think you mean cowlogen. Yeah, now you really got to watch who's got their lips on you in this town. <laughs> Listen, Kentuckin, I need you to take a look at something for me. Seems I've done more favours for you than I've had gristle in me teeth. Well, don't forget, I did let you in on one of the only two methods of how to legally kill someone. Only I wish I knew that before they put me away for 12 years. <laughs> you still haven't told me the second method. Maybe one of these days. I'll hold you to that. Now, what have you got? Get your schnozzle round that. Tell me what you make of it. <laughs> oh, interesting. Narrowing it down. The protein traces are a young breed. Continental European, possibly Charolais. What about the sauce itself? Well, the sauce base ingredients are from a recognizable supply, but have been simmered in a large vat, made in bulk, and filled out with cheap white vinegar. I don't need a full ingredients list, just take a swing at it. If I had to make a call, I'd say it has all the hallmarks of Chez Le Buffet restaurant. Except... Except? Something tells me it's not their usual in-house formula. It's been a while since I tore up a Harrisford Angus in there, but judging by this, their quality has considerably dropped. Anyway, that's about as close as I'm gonna get you. Thanks, old friend. Don't mention it to anyone. <laughs> Seriously, though, don't. Do you supply to Shayla Buffet? No longer. When they said they were expanding into a new business venture, exploiting every part of the carcass, including the hoof, I had to draw a line. You never told me you had standards. What can I say? Beef is my life. Ah, Dunderbit. There's more to life than meat, you know. <laughs> oh, Hector, you say the funniest things sometimes. So, still business as usual? Oh, they keep sending out these pesky health inspectors. How are you still open? Funny. They never seem to make it back to head office to process their findings. 
word of advice to your ears only, dear Hector. Avoid the second sail bin on the left, marked Veal. You look good. Have you lost weight? You're not kidding, shed 14 stone last month. Holy mother. Atkins? No, no. The divorce papers finally went through. <laughs> What's the latest on the block? Have you tried the warm black pudding frappuccino in the slushy machine behind you? Sounds, uh, wholesome. Just the thing on a chilly winter day after a meat pudding. I'm in a good mood. Take as much as you like. Uh, meat pudding? Ha 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 ha! Good, wholesome, fat wrapped around tender carcass extremity offcuts in a delicious sauce of blood, gristle, and selected herbs. Warmed in the oven for six hours, then iced. Can't be any worse than your briskets and cream. You'd be surprised. Got any wafer thin aim? You insult me. You should know I don't make any cuts under five inches. Try Value Land, pansy. Always a pleasure. Don't be a stranger. Is this blood? I call it Nosferatu's delight. Sounds ominous. What's in it? It's a black pudding flavoured frappuccino smoothly. So it's blood in a slushy machine. Ninety for a percent genuine livestock blood with a hint of basil. Take some if you like, on the house, old mate. Got any cups or anything? No. There's been a run on this stuff with the goths. Uh, I'll need to bring me own. Smells like jasmine with a hint of cordite. There's got to be something wrong with any meat product you can drink. I could really use a lid for this. Yo, Barry, here's a gallon for ya. Knock yourself out. Oh, thank you, sir. You're a true saint. If only you knew. So, what'll it be in exchange, chum? The sticky labels or the wall planner? Eh? No, none of that. I want the shirt off your back, like you said. The shirt? All right. Well, I didn't think you'd. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Oh, see, this is the lucky shirt my dead auntie brought me. No, oh, it really tugs on me heartstrings. But a deal's a deal. Shirt. He's got you there, Barry. Well, you drive a hard bargain, friend. Ah, uh, here you go. Hmm. Huh. Something doesn't quite feel right. Ah. A little neat, it'll do. He must have had a case of the sweats. Blech. He'll never make the journey back to his family and kids alive. It's sad, really. Let's hope whoever gets the transfusion doesn't develop hoof and mouth. Seems a bit shifty. Wouldn't have expected that from someone in the blood trade. I was wondering, customer. So, what's this beef on demand then? It's our new service. All you can eat beef delivered right to your door, any cup, any sauce, any time, anywhere. <coughs> Sweet Enola Gay, why did I not know about this? That might be the best business idea I've ever heard since those hard hats with beer cans attached. That's right, beef on demand. You order, we slaughter. Nice slogan, only rhymes in Britain though. <coughs> Keeps the room at the perfect temperature to promote rampant bacterial growth.
I'd love to get paid to watch TV all day. Any good detective shows on? Uh, diagnosis murders on four. I said good detective shows. Uh, no then. An impressionist painting. The artist is doing a remarkable impression of someone with no talent. Looks as comfy as the ones out front of me old Ed Master's office and gives me the same sense of dread. Well, if it comes off a cow in any shape or form, it's on here. <laughs> Welcome to Shale Birthday Takeaways. Order number, please. Number 58008. That's my badge number, punk, and I order you to cooperate. <coughs> Whatever, boss. Do you recognise this sauce? Uh, butterfly? Or maybe a ballerina? Butterfly? It's not a blimmin' Rorschach test, you jackanape. I was talking about the sauce. Oh. <coughs> Oh, in that case, truth is, it actually looked like a man sodomising a city bus. What can you tell me about the man who ordered this sauce? Are you for real? It's very important, and may I remind you that by failing to answer correctly, you may be charged with... Public defecation? Oh, all right, all right. Just don't tell my boss. There's no staff toilet on the premises. I was hoping it'd get lost in the smell of stewed beef. <coughs> oh, I thought that was the stewed beef. Technically, it was once. So, uh, can you confirm with absolute clarity that this sauce came from your restaurant? Confirmed? Well, actually, not absolute clarity. Where did you find it? in an abandoned building in the industrial estate, covering about 200 square feet of the interior. Oh, fiddlesticks. He must be back at it. Who is? A delivery driver for Beef On Demand. So what is your Beef On Demand driver back at, exactly? <coughs> same old tricks, same old pranks. You know, the usual. Actually, I don't know. Enlighten me. Can't grass or he could get done for assault. You're about to get done with assault. Seems I've said too much already. Is this British beef I would be clogging my colon with? Do you want the official response? The truth would be a refreshing change. It's actually a South African zebu, but it was processed in Britain so it can be classed as British beef. What the chuff is a zebu? I'm not eating some poncho-wearing, moustache-sporting, sorry excuse for a cow. What have you got for someone with no cash or debit card? I've got a slightly snotty middle finger. I'll pass. No, really? Free of charge? <laughs> One order of barbecue sauce to go, please. You can't just order sauce. <laughs> so, would beef on demand deliver to the industrial estate? Oh, sure. Is that where you found the stain? The industrial estate? Wait a minute. I never said anything about the industrial estate. It's you. You're the terrorist. What? <laughs> that always works on TV. Might I be able to speak to your delivery driver from Beef On Demand? I am not at liberty to divulge that information. Oh, you could have got a law degree for their birthday. The security of our drivers is of the utmost importance to Shayla Buffet. Oh, really? But sending them out into Clapper's Reek with a truckload of meat with nothing to protect them from the horns of ravenous tramps that roam the streets is considered good company practice, is it? How do I get hold of this mobile meat machine? Simple. You sign up for the service. <laughs> How much is the service? 
Our executive beef on demand package has a £500 a month sign up fee. You what? I could purchase the car for that. You could, but you still wouldn't get the number of the driver. Come on, son, let's not make this any more painful than it needs to be. Cough up the number, no pun intended. Customers only. What if I was to leave a nice crisp five pound note on your desk? Then I would take the note and put it in my pocket and tell you that the number is for customers only. Listen, unless you want me to rearrange your snot encrusted features all over your face into an even more grotesque arrangement than God saw fit to give you, give me the delivery driver's number! No, Cashy, no, Numby. <laughs> now are you going to order something or not? So how much to sign up for Beef On Demand? 500 quid and we throw in a steak tatar. A free lump of dodgy uncooked mince is hardly an incentive to place an order for all you can eat beef. Never mind, not hungry. <laughs> Well, look here. A Clapper's Reek Preservation Society donation tin. I gave that toss a 25 grand this morning to clean up this town, and here we are, six hours later, with no improvement. Should have paid off me gambling debts instead. At least then this town would be a better place for me. Hey, isn't there some show on now about conjoined octuplets? Really? Those shows are so gross. <laughs> what channel? Uh, it's called uh, Eight Heads One Arse or something. Keep flipping, you'll find it. Chump change from a chump's change jar. Please wait to be disregarded. Chez Le Buffet. Sometimes quantity is worth paying for. Through these doors have walked some of the most pretentious pillocks in the world. He looks like Palmer Ham wrapped round a breadstick. Right, I need a table for two. Looking at sir, I am inclined to agree. What date would sir require? Oh, any time. I'm not fussy. Reservations do fluctuate. I'll just check. Ah, you may be in luck, sir. There will be another table free in... 11 months. How does that suit? And if it's sooner, the way my day's going, I'll be dead by then. That will be a sad day for us all. Good day. Table for two and make it snappy. Under what name, sir? Shorty and Lysia Polchester. And that would make you Monsieur Polchester? Uh, yes, I am he. Of course you are. Right this way. Thanks, Bucko. Wait, you're directing me to the takeaway counter. Yes, it was not difficult to see through your rose. Unless, of course, sir, you may have possibly eaten Madame Polchester, because if that were the case, I might believe you. Yes, yes, I did, in the car on the way over. Hmm, I did say might, I sadly do not. But may I say that was a very nice try, yes? Good day. Uh, the mayor. Afraid not, Honorable Mayor. Perhaps you booked the reservation under your real name instead of that of your title? And your name is, Monsieur Mayor? Well, I... I don't know. As expected. Perhaps you may find a biker bar up the street more to your fancy. Good day. Detective Inspector Hector. Not on the list, sir. Mm, no, perhaps I didn't hear you correctly. It could be the inflection of your speech and the muffling effect of your, uh, many fine chins impede my understanding. Uh, Nicodemus? Nothing. 
Troy Salvador. Nope. Glenn? No. Mr. Bogus J. Pseudonym the Third and his wife, Falsity Sham Sham, Empress of May Dupica. Nothing how unfortunate. Would you care to invent another name? Or shall I just make one up and tell you it's not on the list all by myself, sir? Bull sniffer. Not there either, Monsieur Bull Sniffer. I actually don't have a reservation. Ah, excellent. My sense of intuition has not gone amiss. Please order substandard items wrapped in brown paper from the side of the room that is not where I am. Good day. How do I get a table for tonight? I'm afraid we're all booked up for the evening and many evenings hence. Unless there is a consolation and you happen to be standing at my person between the time I cross off one name and add another from the waiting list, I'm afraid your luck continues as usual. Now, if you wish to gobble something in the meantime, please try talking to the appealing fellow at the takeaway counter. If that fails, at least you'll come out of it with a conversation from a man of similar refinement. Good day. Can I get on the waiting list? You may, sir. However, if you wish to be eating anything within the next 11 months, you are much obliged to use the takeaway counter. It has been erected for marginal matters of the public such as yourself. Good day. What happens if there's a cancellation? As you don't often frequent classy eateries, I would not expect you to understand the complex ins and outs of this busy environment, sir. Oh yeah, because I don't know how you're going to cope with the stampede of customers I see before me. It's like the surface of the moon in here. A further example of your grasp with the concept of reservation. Only those who know they are getting in tend to show up. In the meantime, if it is a table you wish, I believe Furniture Shack have a sale on. Good day. I'm desperate. I need a reservation. Well, it would be impolite of me to refuse you, sir. But it is my job, and I'm quite skilled at it. Good day. How do I get a table for tonight? I'm afraid we're all booked up for the evening and many evenings hence. Unless there is a consem and enter. If that good Good day. Good day. How much money would it take to get to the top of the waiting list? Oh, sir, I'm afraid a fair bit more than the contents of the jar you stole from my mucoidal acquaintance. Besides, I do not accept coinage. It represents poverty and desperation, as well it would ruin the lines of my suit. Good day. Guys like a blimmin' robot. Stand back, big fella. You'll crease the shirt. Good boy. Might be a biscuit in it. Come on, boys, be sinful. I'll strip to be sure. How about a Hail Mary to see some more? And they say church is boring. Hey, Jesus, I'm working me buns off here. You might stay awake, like. Hey guys, what you watching? <clears throat> Is this the bug? Can't a guy get a drink around here? Nice one! We'll play that next! Ugh, I don't even want to think of the stains on that glass. That pole has more STDs than the entire student halls of residence on a Sunday morning.
Yeah. Well, she's uh, kind of sexy. If I don't look anywhere above the neck or below it. Whoa! Whoa! Yo, baby, yo! Shake that nasty thing! Your opening gambit struck me as laden with contempt or misogyny. I'm just trying to be friendly. Sex aids, lubricant, minty fresh breath, all in one machine. Oh crap, this one's out of order. Oh, snoofies. Those things are potent enough to knock out a rhino. Wakes up 48 hours later at the bus station with a pounding headache and a funny taste in his mouth. At least, that's what happened to me. You're never out of luck with a snoofy in your pocket. Snoofies. Side effects include unconsciousness, amnesia and clothing loss. Now you're just being stupid. Right then, what have they done to the confessional to rip the last foundations of decency out of this place? This some kind of peep show? Ah, come on ladies, open up and give us a look-see. Sit down, my son. Is this a ticket office or sunk? What's this for? Punch and bleeding Judy? Take a wee seat. This seems like a nice, dark, quiet, private place to... Uh, I'm sure I want to sit down now. All right, Daddy-o, I'll play you little game. Noi, how long has it been since your last confession? You'll never get a confession out of me. I see. And what sins have you committed lately? Serious? Okay, I coveted my neighbour's, um, daughter. And what do you think might be an appropriate penance for such an atrocity? You don't still have any of those indulgences kicking about, do you? I'm probably gonna need a stack. That'd probably do the trick quite nicely. There and I. Are you unburdened? Go in peace, my child. Well, that was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had in a strip club. What the hell? Where did that guy come from? I wish I could shake this dirty heaven. <laughs> That guy also looks strangely familiar. Hey, don't I know you? Course you do, mate. Yeah, you're shorty Polchester, centre-left half-back wing defence from Clappers United. Look, mate, lovely. You want a souvenir or something? Nah, no, that's all right. What nothing? How about my fag end when I'm done with it? Hand it down to your kids? No, thanks. I won't say no to an old one, though. Piss off, you bloody bin -ooker. Hmm. And he seems like such a nice fella on TV interviews. Shorty Polchester. I thought you'd done a Bosman off to Archester. Did, mate, but I'm back. Turns out Archester's full of woofters who frown on a competitive approach to training. What are you doing out front of this hole? Surely you earn enough money not to have to root around at the bottom of the gene pool with these pigs in knickers. I wish, mate. Lost all me dosh investing in some iPhone penalty shootout game. You still hold the record for the most penalties conceded in a single match? 37 penalties for tossing him in 1984, mate. And it would have been more if they hadn't run out of centre forwards. Soft gits. I know, mate. What's up with people who don't get the offside rule? I mean, come on. Yeah, too right, mate. I mean, you get it, right? Yeah, of course. But go on, explain it then. Uh. Yeah, thought so, you nit. You aren't married by any chance, are you? Why, are you a press hound, mate? Detective Inspector, actually. What, you? Thought you had to be smart and that? At least fit enough to shoulder roll out of an exploding car or summit? That's TV bollocks, mate. Can't believe what you see on there. Why not? You believe the pelvic injury came from bloody spring friendlies? 
Well, between you and me, it did come from a particularly talented pair of friendlies. Hey, mate? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I've met your wife. She seems rather nice, if a bit dense. Ah, mate, she is nice. Really is. Looks nice. Taking me out to Chesla Buffet tonight. But you know what I really like? Blimmin' naught is what I like, mate. <laughs> and, yeah, she's dense. Why our women don't like us ogling other birds is beyond me. Too bloody true, mate. I mean, it's not like we can stop ourselves. It's true. It's genetic. No point fighting it. I don't. But the missus? If she saw me down here, she'd have me threads out on our spacious front lawn quicker than you could say, that is one wonky figuado. That is one wonky... Don't, mate. I... You know any place I can get internet round here? Ooh. Internet, mate? Yeah, mate. I know a place. You know it. I was asking you. Heard something about making connections around here, did you, mate? Yeah. Like there were some, uh... Oh, let's call them, uh, transactions going down. Transactions? I don't know, but going down, I sure as snakes not do, mate. <laughs> Unless you don't, in which case neither do I, right? Oh, right. Bit dead inside, eh? I tell you, mate, when I feel a little dead inside, I go in there to wake up little shorty. <laughs> Lifts me spirits, eh? Lift. <laughs> in here? Not in here, mate. In there. Ah, uh, of course. What are you doing out here? New law, mate. What is? Well, you can't smoke inside no more, mate. It's a gentleman's club in a converted Catholic church and they're concerned about the smoking ban. Bloody fire alarms, mate. So bloody sensitive a flaming sunburn can set them off. Gotta smoke out here now. Tried smoking in the toilets last month. Cleared the place out. Come back today, blimmin' paranoid bastards sealed off the toilets. That's a bit extreme. I know. Where am I supposed to piss? The phone booth? Yeah, mate. Never tried the phone booth. I highly recommend it. Saved me bacon more than once. So, I saw you coming out of the confessional just there. Oh, really? Did you now, mate? Yeah, you came out right after me. Interesting, mate, because I didn't see you in there. In there, I mean. I didn't see you in the confessional either. Hmm, well, you must have seen me because I was definitely in there. You get me? Yeah, well, I too was in there. In there or in there? Is there a difference or is there a difference? Exactly, mate. Right on the bleeding what's it? <laughs> bleeding what's it, eh, mate? There have been times in here, I can tell you. Ah, you know what I'm talking about, eh? Not a flaming clue. About that confessional. Yeah, mate. Had a rather odd chat with the priest. Did you now, mate? How long was the old chat then? Eh? How long exactly? Well, I'm not sure why you would be interested. Well, let me put it this way, which might shed some mutual light on things. Would you say it was about two, I don't know, six minutes and eight seconds, eh? Yes, in fact, I think it was exactly six minutes and eight seconds. All right. If it was, it must have been very uh, <laughs> rewarding then, eh? Yeah, cleansing even. Cleansing? Not bloody likely, mate. <laughs> I like you, dirty bugger. Had a rather odd chat with the priest. Did you now, mate? How long? Well. Well. Would... Where is this going? Never mind. Sorry to waste your time, mate. Oh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, whatever, mate. About that confessional. Yeah, mate. I think there's something going on in there. Do you, mate? Do you think there is, mate? Yeah, I'm sure of it. You think too much, mate. And you know what I do when I think too much? 
going to rehab? Nah, mate. I like to lie down until the thought goes away. You get me? <laughs> yeah, I could go for a good lie down right about now. Mate, you know it, mate. You spend much time in there? Mate, I go in there just about every time I have an impure thought. What about you? What about me? You ever have any, um, impure thoughts then, hey, mate? Does the consideration of purchasing any drink other than freshly squeezed orange juice count as an impure thought? <laughs> you know it, mate. Whatever gets you going, eh? Yeah, mate. I tell you, mate, I'm off to have a little lie down myself, eh? Eh? <laughs> Absolutely. Be seeing you, mate. Be seeing you. Not if I see you first. <laughs> mate! What the hell was that about? Hello, boys. You like to swing on me wee rosaries? That shirt makes you look like a tool. Now you rock, mate! Take a wee seat. Noi, how long has it been since your last confession? It's been six minutes, eight seconds since my last confession. Has it, Noi? And you feel the need to be back here again so soon? I feel drawn here somehow. And arresting. I see. And what sins have you committed lately? I had an impure thought. Really, Noi? And do those impure thoughts plague your wee head day in and day out like a swarm of locusts? Yeah, naughty, filthy locusts. And arresting. And what do you think might be an appropriate penance for such an atrocity? I should just lie down until the thought goes away. Do you think that's a good idea? Lying down for a good wee ponderance, eh? I may even close my eyes and get lost in the moment. There now, are you? Oh, I was sure I had it that time. You didn't let me finish. <clears throat> there now, are you? Ready to turn those impure thoughts into impure actions. What in the unholy hell? That's right, you wee dirty bugger. Unholy hell indeed. Oh, God, what have I done? Not even God can help you now, you poor lost soul. Hold on tight, cause you're going down. <laughs> I've totally forgotten why I even came in here. Oh, that was it. I'm tracking a terrorist to his possible hideout from a remnant trace of his internet address. Whew. Dates like this, it's so easy to lose track. Just had the ride of your life and want to remember it forever. Bloody gift shop. They get you coming and going in this place. <laughs> 